Welcome to Think Over Here, the show where we pop all over the world and talk about peoples, cultures, history, stories, or really anything that I find interesting or or fasc. Can I talk? Or fascinating. I'm Owen, and today we are headed over to Latvia, and really, yeah, you know, all over the world today. We're you know what? It's fall. I'm tired. I'm mad. I am just going to take it easy today. And yes, you heard me right. I am mad. I'm not angry. I'm mad. I'm na- I'm not one who usually gets mad. So let me explain myself. Mad is an acronym for mushroom absence disorder. It's a lot. So think sad, you know, sad, the uh, seasonal disorder, the seasonal affective disorder where, you know, during the dark winter months, people can feel more depressed and you can get the happy light to help you get some more light, make you feel better. That's sad. There's also the fall version, mad, and that is mushroom absence disorder. That's when you don't have mushrooms. And specifically, specifically when you aren't foraging for mushrooms. Now, I maybe maybe some of you don't get it. The people who like to go mushroom picking, I I'm sure they totally understand what mad is. But if you don't, if you've never gone mushroom picking, I understand why you wouldn't get it. But just imagine fall, prime mushroom growing season, and it's a warm day and it had just rained. These are the perfect conditions for mushrooms, and you go out. And you have your basket on the crook of your arm. You have your perfectly tuned, hand-selected, hand-crafted mushroom knife. And you go out to your favorite secret secluded mushroom picking spot. And there are no mushrooms to be found. You have a mushroom absence. You are mad. Mushroom absence disorder. And for me, I I am mad because I haven't gone mushroom picking in years, even though I absolutely loved doing it when I was in Latvia. And I just need to find some land, find a spot, get the tools to actually go out and do it again. I mean, every, anytime I see mushrooms in the store, I'm just reminded the feeling of why aren't I picking these mushrooms? So there you go. I'm not angry I'm mad. I just want to I just want to go mushroom picking. So we're talking about mushrooms today because mushrooms have a huge impact on peoples and cultures. So we're justified to talk about mushrooms and they're so and like mushrooms are just so cute. They're fun. Who doesn't love mushrooms? I mean my my kid, he doesn't like mushrooms, but I'm sure he'll figure it out someday. <laughs> Uh, now, and when I was living in Latvia, that this was where I was introduced to mushroom pickings. Because growing up, I had never went mushroom picking. I didn't even know that was really a thing that people did. But in Latvia, mushroom gathering is one of their national pastimes. Or as they say over there, they're going to go senwashana, meaning to go pick mushrooms. In fact, Latvians, they love mushrooms so much that they put an image of the mushroom on their coin. So before Latvia switched over to the euro, they had the lats. And on their lat coin, well, on some of their lat coins, they had a picture of a mushroom. Not just any mushroom, the king of the mushrooms, the baravika. That's right. We're, We're going species specific. I mean, not all mushrooms are created the same. And the baravika, if you see it, it is a sight to behold. The baravika is, it's thick. It has this thick white stem and then this thick, like, pillowy brown cap. I'm trying, I'm looking up what the English name for the baravika is because that's my problem. I went to Latvia and I learned all these Latvian mushroom names. And so I don't know what they are in English. Okay, I found the name. They're called... Boletus edilis, or I guess the common English name, are penny buns. So the penny bun in English, or I like the Latvian version, baravika. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, before going over to Latvia, I went to the missionary 
school. I was living over in Latvia. Uh, I was a, as part of the church, a church program. So I went over there, went to this missionary school for several weeks. It was an intensive course in Latvian. So I, so I went over to Latvia, lived there for two years, and I learned Latvian. And so during this missionary school, I remember I was all focused on trying to learn all these words that I thought would be really important. You know, words like cupboard or dresser, words that I thought I would use frequently. Ironically enough, those really important words I thought I would use all the, all the time, like cupboard, never used, not a single time when I was in Latvia. But mushroom names like Baravika for your penny buns, Gailanes for your chanterelles, I would use constantly, especially in the fall. Talking mushrooms was the thing to do with people. So it's just kind of funny how, you know, I had this American idea, this American culture that I was going, that I had before going over to Latvia. And then when I went to Latvia, I learned that those things in American culture that were really important, or so I thought, not nearly as important over in Latvia. Do you want to talk mushrooms? And so over in Latvia, they have mushrooms everywhere, especially in the fall. You know, right at the end of the summer, right when it's still warm before all the snow comes. So there are thousands of these mushrooms. You can find them on the, you know, people selling them on the street and open air markets. And a lot of them are these nice uh, grandmas or babushkas, you know, who would go out and forage for mushrooms. And then they'd be selling their fresh or dried mushrooms in the market. And, you know, mushrooms, they are in the advertisements. You, if you go in people's homes, they're, you see them just littered on the counter, drying, being cooked. They're putting in sauces. I mean, Latvia is mushroom heaven, mushroom heyday. Especially, I mean, like if you go and take a bus or a train over there during the fall, it is not uncommon to just see people with their baskets and their mushroom foraging gear. Just going out, go, they're going out in the forest to go gather their mushrooms. And Latvia is the great place to do it because of the rains, it's wet. Mushrooms, they love growing in the warm, wet weather of fall. And Latvia, it, the country itself is 50% forest just about. And so, and a lot of that forest is owned by the country. And so it's free access for people to go out and go. It's, not, it's a public land. And so people can just go out in the forest. It's lovely walking out in the Latvian birches and the Latvian spruces and Latvian oaks, just these tall silver trees walking around looking for all the beautiful mushrooms that you can find. Highly recommend it. And again, I lived I lived two years in Latvia and I think going mushroom picking doing going mushroom picking was top three things I ever did I ever did over there. And of course, America and other countries they have a great mushroom picking scene as well. Just there's lots of clubs. Just go out and talk to people. Of course, don't ever eat a mushroom that you don't recognize. But if you go out with some experts, you can have a great time and get get, get some great nature. And who knows, one day you can find your own secret mushroom spot that you can keep secret. And I think that, you know, that's kind of part of the fun is going out there, finding your own secret spot and going, checking on it, seeing what mushrooms are there every day. Oh, I almost forgot. I mean, Lat I keep saying that Latvia loves their mushrooms, and they really do. I mean, they have a national mushroom picking championship over there where they go out, they, everybody gathers in the forest, same spot, they have a time limit, they go out and gather as many mushrooms that they can gather, and whoever gets the most is crowned the champion. So have I, have I said this enough? Mushrooms are awesome. I love them. We need more of them in the world. Well, let's jump into some mushroom facts. Because when I was over in Latvia, one of my favorite mushrooms to spot was the Latvian name. It's called the musmire, which literally means fly killer. Musa for fly and mire for uh, kill. Musmire. And in English, it's the fly agaric and... You might consider it the Super Mario Bros. mushroom. It's the it's the red mushroom with the white spots on, on the cap. That, you know, you're like typical classic mushroom. They were growing everywhere over there in Latvia, just usually right at the base of these trees. And so now the first question, and I had this question when I was over there, was why is it called the fly killer? 
And that's because in folklore, traditionally, and people do this to this day, they use the musmire mushroom, the fly agaric, to actually capture and kill flies. So what the idea is, is if you leave the mushroom caps on a windowsill, or what, or what a lot of people do is they'll chop up the mushroom caps and then put them in milk, then the flies will come, they'll land on the mushroom caps, or they'll drink the milky mushroom solution, and the flies will ingest the poison and die. And so you can actually see this if you leave the moose mire, the fly agaric, on a windowsill, you'll see over time that these flies will come land on it and then they'll just be passed out dead next to the cap. However, there's been research looking into whether or not the flies actually die because you definitely get a bunch of flies next to the cap or the mushroom milky soup and they are, aren't moving to the eye, but science has looked closer and they found that the flies are actually just knocked out. They're intoxicated, essentially. They're drunk. They're on drugs. And uh, that's because the moose mire ha does have some psychedelic effects. If you eat it, it's poisonous. It, will, it can kill you. It will not make you feel good. Do not eat them. But basically, it's described as basically just being really drunk. You just get nauseous. You get sick to your stomach. Um, you can black out. Uh, sometimes they describe like a psychedelic kind of flying sensation. But several, several people have hypothesized that what's happening here is that the flies are eating the, the mushrooms, getting intoxicated, then just passing out. And so if you track those flies, you'll see that they're not dead but that after a couple hours to a couple days, they'll actually revive and fly off. But then other flies will, of course, come in, eat the moose murate, and look like they're passed out. And so it always looks like there's a clump of dead flies. And most people, what they do is when they see a bunch of dead flies, they'll gather them and throw them away, throw them in the fire, throw them out, toss them out. And so it still works as a great fly trap. Does it kill them? Eh, not really, but it knocks them out. <laughs> And I know I just said that the moose mire, the fly agaric, is poisonous, and it is. I mean, there are accounts of people dying when they're eating them, so don't do that. However, if they're prepared the correct way, you can actually get rid of those toxins because the toxins in the moose mire are water-soluble. So if you boil the mushrooms first properly, the toxins will enter into the water, and then you can safely eat the mushroom. So people eat them all the time, just you got to make sure you're doing it right. And again, don't go out just picking mushrooms and eating them. Make sure you have an expert to, make, to be able to identify them. Make sure you're cooking them properly. Again, with an expert, this is not a thing to experiment on unless you know what you're doing. So I guess that's an important thing to mention. These, you know, mushrooms can be dangerous. There's a lot of poisonous ones, and that's not the only danger that you can experience uh, with mushrooms in other parts of Europe. So not so much in Latvia, but like over in like Ser Serbia or Croatia, uh, it's been known that people have actually been hurt by buried landmines. You know, they go out in the forest looking to go gather mushrooms and they go into a spot where during the wars there were buried landmines and they can get hurt. And of course, you also get people who get lost or, you know, get exposed to the elements. And so if you do go mushroom picking, make sure that you do so safely. Anytime as you do, anytime as you, just like anytime when you go outside, just make sure you're doing it safely. Oh, and before I forget, you know those fly garricks that we were just talking about? A lot of times people call them toadstools. And you know, of course, the common idea with a name like toadstools is that toads or frogs would sit on them. And I can tell you, when I was over in Latvia, anytime I saw a moose mire. I would take pictures of it. I loved it. And not a single time did I ever see a toad with the mushroom. I saw a lot of toads over in Latvia. I was working on this farm, story on that later, but never in association with the mushrooms. And so some people believe that the toadstool became associated with toads because both the toads and the mushrooms have poison and could make you sick if you ingested the poison. 
So that's your little random tidbit fact of the day is that they aren't, to they aren't called toadstools because toads sit on them. Rather, they simply have an association with the toads because both the mushrooms and the toads have poison. Now, I mentioned that I saw a lot of toads over in Latvia. Yes. In fact, they, uh, those same coins, the lats where they have the picture of the mushroom, they also, on some of them, have a picture of a frog. Latvia loves nature, and I absolutely love that. Oh, we need, to, we need to love nature more often. Anyway, and so while I was on the, working on this farm, it was by the river, and I remember you would just step in the grass and just see like a dozen toads just hopping away from you. There are so many toads, but that's not the story I want to tell. You see, my mission companion and I, we were working on this farm, and we were working on this farm with a native Latvian. We would go out there once a week and just help them with some of the chores, you know, watch the animals, take care of some of the plants, things like that. And one day while we were working on the farm, you know, we were planting some crops or something. Can't remember exactly what we we're doing. Maybe we we're gathering. It, was, it would have been around the fall. So we, we might have been kind of rolling up some hay. But anyway, uh, he, the, the topic of mushrooms came up, as it often does over there in Latvia. And the native Latvian was talking to us about mushrooms and asked us about some of the great spots and mushrooms that we pick over in America. And then I turned and said, I never went mushroom picking in America. And the native Latvian was just shocked, dumbfounded. He couldn't believe that I had never gone mushroom picking. And then I, later on, I go out around the corner to go get some tools for the work we were doing. And the native Latvian, he turned to my companion and said, can you believe that he has never gone mushroom picking. Now, of course, my my missionary companion, he had never gone mushroom picking either. But you know, he played the part. He played cool. It's like, oh no, I can't. How how could he have never gone mushroom picking? I well, yeah, I know all yeah all the time, all the time. I love mushrooms, even though he had never done it. And so I just again, it just illustrates this point that it is just second nature to many Latvians that you in the fall. You go mushroom picking. Everybody does it. In fact, they even have, I mean, it's so common, mushroom gathering, mushroom picking, that they even have phrases. I mean, they have specific verbs for specific, to gathering specific mushrooms. In fact, they, and they even have like some slang. For example, if, if you were to tell someone a beckwood, which literally means to go pick mushrooms, Basically, you're telling them to kind of like buzz off or uh, take a hike. It's kind of like, you know, if someone's kind of bothering you, you say, hey, Beck, what? You know, get out of here. And uh, it's funny. That was actually one of the phrases that I did learn in the MTC that my m missionary teachers actually said would be important. And they were right. Because surprisingly enough, if you're a missionary going around, you know, talking to people on the street, knocking on people's doors... It's not terribly uncommon to hear this phrase, hey, back what? <laughs> As people are telling you to buzz off. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just got to laugh at some of those old memories. <laughs> uh, but the nice thing was, after that conversation with that native Latvia on the farm, I made it a goal that before I left Latvia, that I would go mushroom picking. That was my goal and I was going to make it happen and by golly I did I remember it was my last year in Latvia and I was there was one person in particular who I wanted to go mushroom picking with and so I ranged all the cards I got all the meetings got everything coordinated so that we could go out mushroom picking in Sarnikava which was this town about an hour's train ride outside the main city of Riga I remember just being so excited going on the uh, train. I had these plastic bags. We had our Remy bags. Remy was this popular food, uh, grocery chain. So we had these plastic bags, Remy bags. We had some knives, you know, that we had take, got out of our little missionary apartment. We went on that train. We went to Sarnikava. We were going mushroom picking. And we go there. And the person who's going to be our guide, he just saw our gear and he just laughed, especially when he saw our knives because we did not have the proper mushroom picking knives. And so he outfitted us with the proper mushroom equipment. And then I remember we just went out and it was just a beautiful morning. And in Latvia, the trees are just so 
tall and skinny. It's very magical. And I remember walking out just into the middle of the forest, surrounded by these trees, you know, just these shrubs. And the trees, they were just tall and silver, and there was even a slight fog that day. It was just very magical. And then you're just walking around, and then just you find patches of mushrooms, and the mushrooms are just so bright. You know, they have yellow mushrooms and white mushrooms. They have red, brown, and all every color of the rainbow. And you just go, and you just go there, and it was just so fun because you know we there are several of us American missionaries who are going out gathering the mushrooms. And we would just you know call back to the guy and be like, "Hey, we found one. What's this?" And he'd come over and tell us to eat it or not eat it. And, you know, he showed us the technique of cutting the mushroom with the mushroom knife just under the stem and then checking for worms because that is a very common thing. Uh, You get slugs and worms that the slugs will go on top of the mushroom and eat it from the top and you get worms that go into the stem and eat it. And I remember because you would just go and see these beautiful mushrooms, you get so excited, you would cut them and see, you know, the worm tunnels and you just have to toss it aside. And you always toss it aside so that the spores can grow and continue to make more mushrooms. There is foraging etiquette. And you don't ever get the very first one you see because you want the mushrooms to be able to spread. And you don't ever, you know, wipe out a clump of mushrooms to extinction. You always leave several of the mushrooms there so that they can continue to grow and reproduce. Or else your favorite mushroom picking spots will soon become barren wastelands. And the other fun thing, too, we didn't just go, go foraging for mushrooms. In the fall, it was a great time. We also found some nice berries, and we, we found some fresh hazelnuts from the trees. Just wonderful experience. I highly recommend, if you can get into the foraging hobby, it is just a blast. Again, just make sure you'll be safe. Get an expert. Get the right gear. And I remember on that mushroom hunting trip, we even found the Baravika. Now, the Baravika, that, when you talk to Latvians, that is the prized mushroom. It is the goal. If you are going mushroom picking, you want to find as many Baravikas. They are big and they are tough. Well, not tough, but they are big and they are beautiful and they're tasty. Makes great sauces and soups. I remember on this, I remember on this mushroom gathering trip, my, my Bekwilshana trip, uh, we did find some Baravikas, and that was a big win for me. But that was not the only Baravika that I found. And I learned, I learned that Latvians will risk life and limb in order to get the Baravika mushroom. What happened was we went with a group of Latvians to an outdoor zoo. It was like a nature zoo, so it was mainly trees and wood woody areas, but then every once in a while they would have a little setup where they would have an animal, you know, like some antelope or something. And what happened was there was this big bear setup. So in the bear pen, so, you know, we were, again, just hiking along in this forest trail, and then there was this zoo area where there was, there were bears. But in the bear pen, near the fence just close enough that you could reach it where there's baravikas. And so this little old lady, sweetest lady, one of the sweetest, sweetest ladies I ever, one of the, can I talk? One of the sweetest ladies that I ever met, she saw, she saw the baravika in the bear cage. And what she did, again, this is a nice little old lady. I mean, in her seventies and she's wearing She's, you know, she's wearing like a babushka gear. So she's in a dress. She gets down on her hands and knees and reaches under the fence, trying to reach this mushroom while there are bears walking around. And the bears, they notice her go reaching for the Baravika. And some of the other uh, Latvians who were with some of the younger guys, they saw the lady struggling, trying to reach and get this this, uh, mushroom. And they saw that she was not quite going to get it. She was not in, she was not in reach. She was not going to be able to make it. And they saw the bears getting kind of interested in the activity. And so what they so they convinced they were like, hey, get get back, get back. The bear's coming. And she said, No, I need to get this mushroom. <laughs> it's a baravika. I need to get it. And 
And so what the only thing they could do was one of them had to get down and reach, you know, stretch his arm out as far as he could and barely pick up this mushroom so that she would stop trying to get it. And so that's what happened. He went down, he reached, picked up the mushroom. They pulled out, the bears came over, sniffed around, no one got hurt. But I was just amazed that, you know, we were, they were literally risking their arms to get the Baravika, but they got it. And I'm sure they made a wonderful soup (laughs) <laughs> or sauce with it. I mean, that was honestly when I went mushroom picking and we made that wonderful mushroom soup. It was just so good. I mean, it was simple recipe, so easy. All you do is you get those chopped mushrooms. So all the mushrooms you forage, you chopped them up. Again, they're just so because they're wild and fresh. You have this big variety of mushrooms because you're not just picking the same type of mushrooms. So they have different flavors and textures. So you get all your chopped wild mushrooms and. You guys just like a little bit of onion, some ham, and then just some sour cream and cook them up. Magnifique. So good. So tasty. So again, if you can go mushroom picking, you got to do it. It's one of those things you got at least once in your life. Just go out, find an expert, go mushroom picking. It will change your life. Well, I think, I think I, that I better, I better call it there. I've been rambling about (laughs) mushrooms in Latvia for a while I've just again I was just I you know here and here where I'm living it's just getting to that weather where I'm starting to see mushrooms popping up everywhere and it is making me mad I am feeling that my absence of mushrooms and I want to go out there get mushrooms and so hopefully talking with you guys sharing those stories will help alleviate some of those feelings of until I can actually go out there and gather my own mushrooms. And so with that, I want to leave you. I am not going to do the question bowl today because I'm not feeling it. Rather, I'm going to share with you a personal secret of mine. Today has been just kind of a long, tiring day for me. I have not been making healthy food choices. My lunch literally consisted of me... Well, I guess not my lunch. I actually had a real lunch, but I had several snacks today where all I did was get some bread and I had this old frosting from a chocolate cake that I made like a week ago and I just put the frosting on the bread and ate it like a sandwich and it was so good that I did it again and then I did it again. And then I realized that the best part of the sandwich was the frosting. And so I just got a chunk of frosting and ate that plain (laughs) and it was just so sweet so potent that I instantly regretted it and um, so hopefully I go and have a better dinner no promises that was my snack a chocolate frosting sandwich followed by a chocolate frosting sandwich followed by a giant spoonful of chocolate frosting so Make good, make good health choices. Go mushroom picking, but get an expert, and I'll see you on the next time. Ciao.